Hi, welcome to another episode of Making Poor Decisions, where I am going to be putting my Acer Glen into secondary or tertiary. More on that in a second. Alrighty friends, as I mentioned, today's video is going to be all about our Acer Glen. We're going to be continuing on with this saga. Now, a few weeks ago, I did actually put this into secondary. I filmed the whole thing, I gave you my notes, uh, it was all ready to go, and then I kind of sort of deleted the footage. So let me recap what I did, um, and then we'll catch you up to what we're going to be doing today. So when I wrapped this about two weeks ago, I noticed that most of the maple flavor was gone and I contribute that to me using the wrong kind of yeast. There is a uh, particular type of strain that I should have used and I'll put that strain up here because I can't quite remember what it is. So the name is going to be somewhere in this area. Um, I just used, I believe, Red Star uh, Premier Blanc, uh, which was fine. It still tastes good, but all of that maple flavor that I was hoping for is completely gone. And, but it's alright, because I kind of fixed that, or at least I hope I fixed that. Uh, so what I did uh, was I noticed that it tasted a lot like my basic mead that I have aging right now. There was a lot of honey flavor, there was some vanilla flavor, but there was absolutely no maple flavor. Um, and my original gravity for this brew was 1.092 and when I tested the gravity a couple weeks ago it was down to 0.995 which puts it at somewhere around 12.73% or if we want to round up about 13% ABV which is very respectable and it's honestly where I like to have most of my meads. Now if you don't know the higher ABV your brew is the longer it's going to need to age in order for it to mellow out and taste good. So I like my brews to be anywhere between 10 to 13 percent, so this is actually perfect. But it's an Acer Glen. I want it to taste like maple syrup. So what I did was I added another half a pound uh, when I put it into secondary. And uh, on my Instagram, if you've noticed, I asked you guys, you know, should I add lingonberries to this to make like a Swedish pancake mead? And it was an uh, uh, overwhelming yes to add the lingonberry. So I actually added uh, two ounces of lingonberry like jam or preserves. Uh, so that's going to add, increase the sweetness a little bit. So I'm going to retest my gravity today. It's not going to be 0.995 uh, mainly because I, I don't think that this really kicked off fermentation again. The airlock stayed pretty neutral. Uh, I don't think the real yeast were really that active but I'm still going to test it. Uh, no matter what the gravity turns out to be today, I'm still expecting it to be probably somewhere between 12 and 13 percent ABV, uh, but we'll get a uh, definite reading in a little bit here. But before I do that, I have to taste it. So let's check it out. Well, actually, you know what? I might as well get the gravity reading and then I taste it because that's my process anyway. So let me move my carboy out of here put this down. Now all of my equipment as always has been sanitized with a solution of very hot water and star sand. Just got to throw that out there because people will ask because it's the internet. And let me fill this up, do a quick reading, and then we get to the fun part of tasting it. So as I expected, the next gravity reading was a little bit higher because again, the fermentation was done, but I added more sugar elements to it because I added more maple syrup and I added the lingonberry jam. So my gravity is back up funny enough to where it originally started, which was like 1.092. Um, so yeah, it's, I don't think that it really fermented again. So I'm going to say that my approximate ABV is still somewhere around 13%. And um, it's pretty clear too. I, I really am appreciating the clarity even though it's still pretty young. And by the way, I am going to be wrapping this again, putting it into tertiary uh, because there is while it's still pretty clear, there's a lot of sediment on the bottom of that. And I just don't think I'm going to get a clear enough brew um, 
by just letting it age again in there. So I'm going to put it into tertiary. Should be fine. I've never actually done that before, but I don't think it's going to hurt anything. But now let's give it a sniff, give it a taste, and see if my Acer Glen tastes like maple. So on the nose, it's more maple forward than it was last time. Uh, when I tried this a couple weeks ago, all I was getting was honey and vanilla. Again, it tasted very much like my basic mead that I have going right now. So very pleasant smell. Yeah, I'd say the maple is definitely there. Not as forward as I would hope, but it's really good. I'm not mad at it at all. So my notes that I'm getting right now, maple, honey, vanilla, with just a touch of the berry, maybe at the end. Yeah. Again, it's not as mapley as I was hoping or expected, but I'm not mad at this. This is really good. And it's only three weeks old, three, four weeks old, something around there. So it's sweeter than I normally make. I typically make a dry mead because I'm not too much of a sweet mead person, but again, not mad at this. Really excited to see how she ages out. So I'm gonna put this over to the side for now because I'll be drinking the rest of that later. Now let's get it wrapped. Yes, again, I do want this to clarify a little bit more. Happy with the clarity now, but as you can see, it's like really nice and clear up here. But down towards the bottom, there's a lot of sediment, and that's just not great when I bottle, which means if I bottled it like this, I'm going to have a few bottles that are really clear and a few bottles that are pretty cloudy. And a cloudy mead isn't necessarily a bad mead, but I'd rather drink a clear, just personal preference, you know? Uh, so here we go. My handy dandy auto siphon which is so much easier than doing it the regular siphon way i've seen some people on youtube um use their mouths to start the siphon which to me is just kind of gross right you sanitize all of your equipment and then put your mouth on it to make your mead go from one container to the next so uh, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. So I do use an auto siphon. And I, I don't know, for the home brewers, the veteran home brewers that are watching my channel, how often do you, you replace your equipment? So this is a brand new auto siphon. I re like to replace mine about every three months or so. I know it probably is fine, but with plastic tubing and all that, bacteria can just grow in these tiny nooks and crannies where it's really hard to clean. And I just don't trust keeping it around forever. So sound off in the comments. How often do you change your equipment? Um, oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention too. I threw some French oak in this to age it on some French oak. So uh, when I put this into secondary, I did add a half pound more of maple syrup. I added two ounces of lingonberries because I didn't want it to be too overpowering. And I threw in a few sticks of French oak and it, I think it brings out more of that vanilla taste. I get it like still a very heavy vanilla flavor with this. Again, not mad at it. Was hoping for a bit more maple, but still pretty tasty. And I don't know how much this is going to be filled because there's a decent amount of sediment at the bottom of this. So, you know, we'll take a look at it, see what happens. And I'll be right back once this is full. All right. So I wrapped this into tertiary, meaning this was in secondary. I'm re-racking it again because when I put it into secondary, I added some more elements. I added some lingonberries. I added a few sticks of French oak. And I noticed that while the top was really nice and clear, the bottom was still pretty cloudy. And I just did not feel like I was going to get a clear mead or a perfectly clear mead with all of that sediment sitting in there. So I have just a little bit of waste left over. I probably could have gotten a little bit more from here to here, but I was risking clogging up my siphon with the berries that are sitting at the bottom of this. And so I'm not really too upset with the amount of waste I have here. 
and uh, I'm probably going to get quite a few bottles out of this. So again, not mad. Really excited to see how this ages out. It's really, really good right now. I've been calling it Swedish pancake, and I think that's pretty accurate because you get the nice taste of maple with vanilla and the lingonberries. And as I'm drinking, I actually have my little glass, my little Glencairn glass with this um, sitting over to the right. The more I drink it, the more I can taste the French oak sticks that I threw in there too. So this is going to be really, really pleasant in a few months. It's actually already pleasant right now, but it's going to age really, really well. Excited to see how clear she gets. It's a little musty right now because I put it from, again, from one ferment to into another. So give it another few days. She's gonna be nice and clear. Uh, and then I'll probably bottle her up in another two to three weeks, let her sit, let her mellow out, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you like this channel, please give me a subscribe, and uh, stay tuned until next time, friends. Thank you so much, and happy brewing!